Hi guys, welcome back to my channel Mom's Time. Today I'm going to be telling you a story about my patient. I have this patient who's an anti-vaxxer. She does not believe in vaccination, so she has not vaccinated her kid. And we have had a lot of back and forth debate about vaccination. And let's just say we've reached a point where we agree to disagree. So recently she came to me with an upper respiratory infection, just a regular cough, cold with a slight fever. And it was her fourth day of fever. And she told me that she went and visited her in-house office doctor and he gave her a prescription. But since her symptoms had not abated, she came to me. I went through the prescription and I saw she was prescribed Augmentin 375 mg twice a day. There was an anti-allergic and a paracetamol for the fever. So I cheekily asked her, are you still an anti-vaxxer? Even through her fever haze, she proudly smiles and says, yes, I am. So I asked her, why are you vaccinating your bacteria? She was taken aback by my accusation. I said, what do you mean? And this is what I explained to her. Antibiotics are basically molecules which target bacterial infections and eliminate them. Most cases of cough and cold are caused by viruses, especially the ones that occur during season changes. And antibiotics do not work on viral infections. In immunocompromised patients or very rarely in a very long-standing sinus infection, you might need an antibiotic because a bacterial infection comes forth. But usually, regardless of whether you take antibiotic or not, the viral infection will run its course and get done with it when it wants to and the antibiotic just goes from one end and comes out the other. Your healthy body has about as many bacteria as it has human cells. Your skin, your gut, your mouth, every part of your body is covered in bacteria and it serves a beneficial purpose. So what happens when you take an antibiotic for a viral infection? One, it disrupts the delicate balance your bacteria has in your gut and you can get the most common side effect of augmentin that is loose tools. Second, it is completely ineffective against viruses, so you're doing yourself no real good. But the worst effect that it has is the good bacteria gets exposed to the antibiotic and it develops resistance against it. Now you might argue, what is the big deal? The bacteria is good for me, right? Well, the potential problem is threefold. Even good bacteria can cause infections in other people. Second, the mechanism by which the bacteria is resisting the action of antibiotic can be passed between two bacteria. So a good bacteria and a bad bacteria, when they shake hands, they exchange genes. Irrespective of whether it had any effect on you or not, whether you got loose stools or you recovered, irrespective, it will get passed in your urine and stools and the sewage bacteria will come in contact with the antibiotic and develop resistance against it. So what is the big deal about antibiotic resistance that I'm making a video on it? Firstly, it's an extremely rampant problem I always see prescriptions from other doctors or patients themselves requesting the doctor that I want an antibiotic to get better ASAP. An antibiotic is a very precious resource. The first antibiotic to be discovered was penicillin and that was in the 1920s. And this was a miracle breakthrough drug. Soldiers wounded in war who would need amputations because their injured limbs would get so badly infected that the whole body would get sepsis. It was one of the biggest discoveries of the century and it changed the fate of so many soldiers in World War II. The guy who discovered it, Alexander Fleming, even back then he had enough foresight to say that if an ignorant man underdoses the patient with an antibiotic, the bacteria can get resistant to it. Fast forward so many years and antibiotics have been misused and exploited to no end. Coming back to my patient, she was given 375 milligrams of Augmentin twice a day for just three days for a viral infection. Not only was she given a less dose, she was also given for a fewer days for a problem that did not require it. Getting back to the beginning of why I needled her saying that why are you vaccinating your bacteria? A vaccine that a doctor gives your kid is basically a weakened bacteria or virus or its component so that your body gets exposed to it and develops immunity against it. So the next time a full-fledged infection comes in contact with you, your body is prepared for it. So similarly, mindlessly taking antibiotics is like vaccinating your precious bacteria to become stronger against all our medicines. Soon enough, people are going to be needing IV antibiotics for a simple thing as a urine infection that can be treated by oral antibiotics today. But tomorrow, that may not be the case. We might be pushed back a hundred years. Skin infections, infections in diabetics, urine infections will need IV antibiotic being pumped into your body and even those might not work. 
So let's all work together to reduce the usage of antibiotics and save this precious resource for the future generations. Thank you. I'll see you next week. Bye.